Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Gabriel Leonardo Magrin. I'm a PhD student at the Federal University of Santa Catarina in Brazil, and it's a huge pleasure to participate of the project Geistlich Plus You in the spotlight. The objective of this video lecture is to present ceiling strategies for alveolar sockets in the context of alveolar ridge preservation. After tooth extraction, a remodeling process takes place on the alveolar ridge, leading to a volumetric change that reduces the bone availability for further dental implants placement. And why do dimensional alterations happen? Because the periodontal ligament is lost after tooth removal, and the healing process of the alveolus takes the bundle bone with it. Bundle bone is the anatomical structure where periodontal ligament fibers are inserted. As the bundle bone deteriorates, the buccal bone fades away. And especially in individuals with a thin gingival phenotype, this uh, situation is especially important. This phenomenon is more intense in the first months after tooth extraction, but is continuous and will progressively lead to a reduction in alveolar ridge volume, sometimes precluding the uh, adequate implant-supported rehabilitation. Therefore, some clinical strategies should be employed to compensate the post-traction dimensional alterations of the alveolar ridge, and I would like to highlight three procedures. The minimally invasive tooth extraction, filling the alveolar socket with a biomaterial of low degradation rate, and the focus of this video, alveolar socket sealing. For our research group, every time we have a clinical case of, hope, of a hopeless tooth, it is important to consider an immediate implant placement after tooth removal. However, alveolar ridge preservation has its indications, particularly when the implant placement will be delayed. In this clinical case, a dental fracture uh, was detected in the cervical part of the tooth and the decision was taken together with the patient for an alveolar ridge preservation procedure and a delayed implant placement in a second uh, surgical stage after six months. The alveolar ridge preservation starts with a minimally invasive tooth extraction as gentle as possible to minimize the inflammatory remodeling process due to surgical trauma. So, we use, in this, in this first uh, picture, a scalpel blade to cut the gingival fibers. Next, a root extraction system was employed to remove the fractured root uh, without using elevators or forceps. In this sequence, we can see the, extraction, uh, the root extraction system. Uh, uh, the root a canal was prepared with a specific drill of the extraction kit and a traction system was attached to the tooth and the root was pulled out vertically with the extraction device without pressuring the surrounding tissues. This was the view after tooth removal. It is important to emphasize the impact of minimally invasive extraction on the maintenance of two delicate structures of ultimate relevance to the success of the uh, alveolar ridge preservation and the overall success of the case. First, buccal bone wall, and second, the interproximal papilla. Well, the next step of our procedure was the application of a slow resorption biomaterial inside the fresh alveolar socket. In, in this case, uh, it was used a BIOS collagen from Geistlich. To improve the handling of the material, first we wet the, the biomaterial with a saline so solution and then we carve it with a sharp blade. Finally, the carved BIOS collagen was introduced in the alveolus into the apical portion of the socket. The remaining parts of the BIOS collagen were placed in the gaps inside the socket until the level of the alveolar bone crest. 
here you can see here you can see <laughs> this was the view of the alveolar socket after filling at this point a question arises how should i close the alveolar socket another question what is the best technique for socket sealing well the literature is controversial in this topic and no clear answer based on the current evidence can be provided however we have some possibilities first i would like to highlight autogenous tissues usually harvested from the palate the use of membranes, but I will explain further how you can benefit from the, from the use of membranes and eh, from them to close the alveolar socket. And nowadays, my personal choice, collagen matrices. The soft tissue from the palate is currently the reference standard and probably the most used technique for socket sealing in alveolar ridge preservation. This procedure, this procedure uh, normally involves an incision in the palatal area, here performed with a punch uh, blade. Then we hold the tissue and complement the incision in the bottom of the tissue uh, until we can remove it. And with this, the portion of the soft tissue was removed, and in this case, an epithelialized graft was obtained and we can then seal the socket with this uh, uh, soft tissue graft. The, the soft tissue punch graft was then placed on the ovular socket over the bone substitute material and was sutured of, uh, to the borders of the alveolus in the receptor area. In an occlusal view, uh, we can see the sutures around the soft tissue graft. The objective of these sutures uh, is to stabilize the soft tissue during these first days or weeks uh, after, surgical after the surgical procedure. The nutrition of these grafts, however, is very deficient and two uh, situations are possible in the postoperative follow-up. First, if we were lucky, uh, an incorporation of this soft tissue can occur, like in this case. <coughs> this, uh, uh, this is a postoperative picture of two weeks after socket sealing with autogenous graft. However, we cannot expect an incorporation of the tissue even after uh, the deepthalization of the borders in the gingival margin prior to graft stabilization. The second possibility uh, that our cases can progress is the necrosis of the grafted tissue. This is not ever bad because in most of the cases the granulation tissue is formed underneath the soft tissue graft and in, if this happens our biomaterial inside the alveolar socket is safe. Nevertheless, the soft tissue graft can eventually be lost too soon exposing the bone substitutes and impairing bone formation inside the socket. Moving on to the collagen membrane. This type of membrane is probably the most used one and uh, has a solid evidence of good clinical results on guided bone regeneration and bone augmentation procedures. But how is the clinical performance of this biomaterial on the ceiling of alveolar sockets? Well, clinicians are used to apply collagen membranes on the closure of alveolar sockets by cutting the membrane in the format of the alveolus and placing the, placing the, the membrane over the bone substitute with the borders of the membrane around, carefully adjusted around the, the marginal gingiva. However, this is not an on-label application and it, it is an extrapolation not recommended by the scientific community. Even though some studies can demonstrate the potential use of collagen membranes uh, exposed to the oral cavity, especially with two or three layers uh, overlapped, this empirical use has no evidence of, uh, no evidence of success. 
Moreover, the uh, exposition of the membrane to the oral cavity may accelerate the degradation of the membrane, leading to an early exposition of the bone substitute inside the ovular socket. Therefore, collagen membranes should not be used as sealing materials for ovular sockets. Nevertheless, we can benefit from the use of collagen membranes in ovular ridge preservation by employing the membrane as a secondary sealing material under a soffit tissue graft or a cellular matrix. In this study of Peromon, Carmon and collaborators, ovular sockets were preserved with xenogenous grafts and sealed with soft tissue pedicles from the palate, with or without collagen membranes underneath. The membrane, pro the membrane protected sockets showed an increased bone formation as compared to unprotected sockets, and thus this double sealing strategy can be potentially interesting in our ovular ridge preservation procedures. Advancing to the third possibility I would like to discuss in this video, now we are going to talk about the employment of collagen matrices in socket sealing, more specifically about Geistlich mucograft. Geistlich, Geistlich mucograft is a porcine collagen matrix composed of collagen types 1 and 3 and was originally developed for, uh, as an alternative for free, ginger, for free gingival grafts, free autogenous grafts. The mucograft seal uh, has 80 millimeters in diameter and has, the, has been developed to be specifically used to seal the ovular socket. This material is constituted of two parts, a lower layer and spongy, huh? thicker and with approximately 4 mm when dry, and an upper layer, more compact, with a dense arrangement of collagen fibers of approximately 1 mm thick. This lower layer with open spaces between the struts of the collagen network is responsible for blood clot stabilization, which may facilitate cell growth and further tissue formation. On the other hand, in the upper part, the collagen fibers have a tight organization, which gives enough resistance to suturing the material to the surrounding tissues and delay the degradation process, which is good since the material needs to remain in situ, at least until the healing tissue is formed. The mucograft seal was our option in, the, in that case. Huh? Nowadays, I do not perform this, this, this compressive suture anymore. I prefer to suture the borders of the material to the surrounding soffit, soffit tissues with single sutures. Another thing that worth mention is that the material loses its thickness when soaked. Therefore, I start suturing the material dried and then the collagen matrix will gradually become wet while suturing. The compressive suture was not a problem in this case because uh, we had a provisional crown to help us, that helped us to stabilize the socket sealing material. This was the CT scan at baseline. Uh, this was the, the scenario, the CT scan after two weeks with the preservation of the alveolus and the uh, buccal bone volume. Uh, uh, the, due to the minimally invasive extraction. And here you can see the, the tomograph af after five months, where the buccal bone was totally lost, but the xenograph maintained the volume and the contour of the alveolar ridge. Here you can see um, the, a nice alveolar ridge contour after six months, and uh, of alveolar ridge preservation, and this was the time where the implant was placed. Well, I also would like to thank uh, Geistlich Biomaterials for the opportunity, and I hope this lecture was interesting for you. 
please feel free to send me an email with questions or suggestions for improvement. Be safe and I hope to see you in the future.